hey, we want to talk to you today about our very first flip that we ever did. Oh boy. And back in 2007 and 2008, bought it, bought it in 2007, sold it in 2008. That's a common question is, well, how did you guys get started? So I'll start and we'll just kind of talk through this. So we bought a house in upstate New York. We were uh, both going through divorces from our spouse at the time. Good times. Yeah, not really. <laughs> bad, bad, diff difficult time. We had uh, two kids from my first marriage. So tough, tough emotional time for sure. If you've ever been through a divorce, you know what I'm talking about. And so very difficult, but I was, we were running out of money and we were running out of money fast. And we had a home-based business. We both had our uh, network marketing business and, and money was dripping away. So anyways, we decided we wanted to get into real estate investing. So we did, and we bought our first house with a mortgage. Uh, you could get what's called a no-doc loan, meaning that even though we had good credit, we were self-employed, so we didn't show much income. So we had to, uh, legally, we had to uh, get this mortgage. So it was called a no-doc loan. So we bought that, and uh, it was actually in your name. Yeah. Amber's yeah. name. And we, we really started out of desperation. We were, we were sleeping on an air mattress, in a two bedroom condo. Yes, we were. With two kids and they were in sports and school and all that already. Yep. So, I mean, you know, life life was not, you know, Great. roses at the moment. It was not a perfect time. I think that's where I want to yeah. encourage you to say there's never a perfect time to do this. And I don't we care. we didn't have money to get started and I think that's one of the biggest things that holds people back is they think they have to use their own money to start. We were desperate. We didn't have money, we had desperation. That was our motivating force. So, we bought the first house, we bought it. Um, I had let a local mail carrier know that I was in the market for looking for houses. I said, well, I'm a real estate investor now. Hadn't, hadn't really bought a house yet. But I said, I'm a real estate, besides the home I lived in, but I said, um, I'm a real estate investor. And so I said, keep your eye out. So she came to the house I was living at at the time, and she said, um, hey, there's, there's people, there's an older couple down the street, they're in their 70s, and they're in a house, it's hot. It was the middle of summer. Yep, middle of summer, and it was hot, and they were putting in a countertop in by themselves. So I jogged down to the house, went in and said, hey, would you be open to uh, selling the house? And she said, well, sure, what do you got? So I ran some numbers and put it together. I don't even know how we ran the numbers, to be honest with you. I don't know what we did, but talked to some friends, I think, and just threw some numbers together. Yeah, and we didn't really have a spreadsheet at that No, time. we had nothing. We had no tools, we had no coaching, we had nothing. It was very difficult. But we bought that house, and at the closing table, Remember the the uh, there was a an argument between the lawyer and the um, the boyfriend of the seller, and without going into all the details, it was a very awkward closing. He was very, he was the definition of curmudgeon. Curmudgeon. He was a curmudgeon. <laughs> so we buy that house, and it was uh, uh, at the closing table. It really got uncomfortable big time, but we did. But the one thing I remember at the closing table, I said, I said, ma'am, could I ask you when did you decide to sell the house to us? And her words were, the minute you walked in the door. <laughs> So looking back, that was the definition of a motivated seller. Right. I walked in, we bought the house. I don't remember the exact numbers. Let's say it was around $70,000. It was you know, more than we would have paid now for sure, or maybe 80. But we bought that house and then we decided to do the renovations. Now we didn't have a plan, we didn't have the scope of work. We just grabbed some tools and we, went to work. We winged it. We did. And we- Is that a word, winged it? Winged it, wung it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what we did. I don't know if that's not a word either. Amazing, we're successful, right? So. We, uh, we bought the house, uh, did the renovations ourselves, everything except for paint. We hired a guy that I used to golf with. Right. Uh, he had a, an older, older gentleman who used to paint on the side. We hired him. And the hardwood floor guy. And the hardwood floor guy. And that was the only, the only thing we did. Everything else we did. We, we redid the, uh, we had the floors done. We had the house painted. We put new kitchen cabinets. No, yeah. countertop. No, kitchen cabinets. cabinets. We put new cabinets in. Uh, put crown molding up, which I had no idea how to cut crown molding. I had to call one of my friends and, and uh, he walked me through it. Measure twice and cut once. Yeah, did all that. Did some work on the that outside of the house. Tin backsplash that was in back then. We tin backsplash, back yep, splash. did all that. And uh, what I do remember is going through that whole process, it took way longer than we than yeah. we than we could do it. Um, way longer than it should have, but we because we didn't have any system. It probably took three months to do it. Oh, at least. It yeah. took, it probably, we, yeah. start, we, we bought it in the summer and then we sold it what? We sold it in, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we didn't, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't close until the next year, until yeah. 2008. So now we're in this house, we're doing all the, all the work ourselves, the renovation work, and... Literal blood, sweat, and tears, though. Literal. Between what was going on in our personal lives and then working on the house ourselves. Yeah. I mean, and we're fighting half the time, too, yeah. like cats and dogs, because we're not, we're not, we're still dating at this time, but we're fighting because it's just... We're both going through divorces. It's just a, it's just, it was it's, tumultuous. It's a, it's a charged time in your life. So we go through and do all the work ourselves, and then we decide we're going to sell it ourselves, right? 
So we didn't, we were unable to sell it ourselves. We tried and I was good at marketing and sales, but I couldn't, couldn't get an offer. Now this is 2008 and we're trying to get it sold. So the market's tanking, not a good time. And we finally decided to hire a real estate agent to come in. And so I called an agent, we interviewed a couple different ones and we chose one, he came in and put the house in the market and a couple, about a month or so later, it finally went under contract yeah. and so. I do remember that the night before closing, we had a final inspection because the, the buyer goes through and does their final inspection. Oh my goodness, I forgot about this. Remember this? In the water? Yes. It was a, we had this ridiculous- Not just water, it was like a waterfall. Ridiculous rainstorm. And like, it's upstate New York, ridiculous rainstorm. And it's cold and it's it's like winter time, but the, it's like ice and rain, it was terrible. And it starts to leak in the basement. Now the basement's not a finished basement, but nonetheless, you don't want to have a, someone come through for their final inspection and this is like a, this is like two days before closing, I think it was. It was really close to closing, and I'm like, we we go we go over to check on the house, and the basement has a foot of water in it, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! I can see water spewing out of the wall. I'm like, no! So we ran to Home Depot and got this stuff you could put in the wall that would stop the leaking. There was water outside, and it was just a horrible experience. We got the house pumped out. We had shop bats worked all night. Got the house shut, we got fans going there, we got it all dried out so we could have the final inspection for the house, right? It was a, it was a fluke, this all happened. Just never saw so much water in the house. Yeah. But we finally got through it, and they did their final inspection, went through everything. We got the basement dry, thank God, and uh, we sold that house. We did? Made about a $17,000 profit. After we paid everything off, like the credit cards that we used yes. and all that stuff, we made about a seventeen thousand dollars profit. So we bought it with a mortgage. With we we bought it with a owner occupied mortgage. I think back then it was a three percent down, right? Was it three percent down? Yeah. Either either Something nothing like down or three percent down. It was very very small. And then we wrapped closing cost in, so that helped with the closing cost. And then we used credit cards for the renovation. Anything we had to do there. When we were done, though, here's the important part. Yeah, this is. We were down to nothing. Like we had these two home-based businesses that were running out of money fast. So the the income is dropping, the mortgage payment is coming due. I have a mortgage payment um, at my other house and Amber had rent and and I had, we had the mortgage payment on this house now we had to pay, plus our credit card bills are coming due and we're running out of cash, credit, anything, any money we're running out of. If that house doesn't sell, we're we're in deep trouble, and so we're we're at I think fourteen hundred dollars left in everything, uh, credit card advances, credit, cash. cash, everything. We are maxed out. Thank God, this is in two thousand eight. So remember, the market's tanking, the news is saying everything is crushing, and we're like, what are we gonna do? We don't sell this we house. In desperation. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be in a world of hurt here because I don't want to hurt my credit score. It took me years to build my credit score back up. So we sold that house. We finally got it under contract, sold it, and uh, we were able to manage to get through the next month until we closed and we did, and we put about $17,000 in our pocket when it was all said and done. We did what we had to do on that house though. At the time, like, you know, looking, they say hindsight's 2020 and it really was. Like looking back, we would have done things a lot differently. Like we would have, another big misconception people have is that they have to do all the work themselves, but we probably just killed ourselves doing the work when we could have just, you know, had somebody, hired somebody to do it and got in and out of the house a lot more quickly. That was the house that you also dressed up in the big body condom and got the asbestos out of the basement because the whole furnace yes, was wrapped in asbestos. Yes, I forgot about that. And yeah, that, yeah we, we got a quote to take the the furnace, the asbestos uh, out of the basement. It was, it was thousands of dollars. I'm like, and as a homeowner, we can't you afford can do that. it yourself. Yes, legally. They, legally, you could do it yourself. Yes. So we, we, yeah, I put a big giant body condom on, a big suit with the goggles and the whole works. I have the, the pictures. Respirator, yeah, she yeah, <laughs> I to throw it in my face. But we did all that and we, we I dissembled that thing. I had to wet it down. I read, I Googled how to do it and I talked to other professionals and I did it. And um, hopefully I don't pay for that later in my life. But I think that uh, I did the best I could to keep myself protected and but, tore that sucker apart. But we did what we had to yeah, do. Yeah, that was the point is we did what we had to do. Like we we dug in and, you know, we were even underestimated by a lot of people around town. But that just kind of gave us fuel to make it work. And we yeah. dug in and did what we had to do. We were determined. Yeah. We were desperate. We were determined. We wanted a different life. And we knew real estate always was you know, such a good historical option for yep. people. And it's just like, we'd never look back. So that was the first house in that town. And uh, since in that capital region of upstate New York, at, at the time of recording this, we're well over 850 houses later that we've done. So it, it's just funny to look back on that first house and say, Wow, like that's that's, that's, where we started. that's where we started. So that was the first house. So in case you're ever wondering what our first house deal was like, there you go. <laughs> It all starts with the first one.